Let's get on with some other adjustments then, and I want to start creating the ripply, crackly, cellular type bump and shape, which of course we're quite used to the fact that we always use crumple for. For now, I'm just going to ditch off the others and pop it straight in there. It's obviously way too small, so we're going to make it lots bigger. And in fact, I'm going to punch on the VPR here, perhaps even put my displacement back on, since I'm going to use it like this. So, now what I've got there ain't a bad size for some effect, and one of the things that we will do here is use a couple of layers of crumple as well to give ourselves more variation. But for this first layer, I want to be bigger still, so, okay, I think that's looking reasonable size-wise. So we're going to go back to adding, now this displacement onto our one there, and see what we get. Okay, it looks pretty good here. Just do a little dim down to try and make it a little more visible and obvious. Okay, it's not bad. Obviously it's not moving with it, but it's a good size. And as we can see, it's quite subtle there, the actual amount. And also quite soft. I'm going to see if I can sharpen it up a bit. Pinch up the small scale a little bit there. There we go, not bad. Again, could possibly use just a little sharpening. I'm going to turn to a function. Let's give bias a go. I really just want to flatten out the blacks more than anything. There we go. There we go. Our displacement looks a lot sharper as well. So that's good. Though this is maybe a bit strong, so of course I can multiply that down some to lessen its effects. And of course I can just use the opacity here. So what I want to do now is of course animate this crumple as well. So at this point I'm going to pop you back into there. And I'm going to cut you guys out. And of course paste you back into my main displacement network here. There we go. And start to add you on like that. And there it is. Right, I'm just going to unhook that sign and swell there for a moment. Come back over to here and just uh, take that into the color instead, because I'm just going to want to have a look at the crumple in isolation by itself there. So there it is, obviously, doing nothing at present. And what I'm going to do is animate it similar to the sign noise there on both the X and Y. Let's take time, just as it is, straight into Y to begin with, and plug that vector to the position of the crumple in this fashion here. And there we see we get this ripply effect taking place as the crumple drops through the plane. And that speed as it is might be okay actually. So we'll leave that as is for now and see what else I want to do with it. Well, first of all, I'm thinking I don't want the scale to be quite so uniform. What I'd like perhaps to do is stretch and compress it along with the main wave turbulence. So just without the displacement and only the color, let's have a quick peek at that again here in the good old VPR. What I sort of want to start doing is driving the scale of this by how big the swell beneath it is and take it out of some of the valleys or squeeze it in some of the valleys. So I'm going to be wanting to do something with my result here. If we take a look at it, of course, we see that it's almost pure white because of course we're getting large displacement amounts there, six meters or more. So I need to sort of normalize it as it were again. Let's try multiplying it down, see how much contrast we maintain. So there we go, multiplying it down by 0.2 gives us a reasonable contrasty picture. I think that's good to drive my scale. It's turning particularly hot here, so breaching just above one. So what I'm going to do with this, that being the case, is to take a good old vector multiply here. Check the scale I'm using, 300 meters there. So enter that for A, multiply it by this, and pop that into scale. If we now plug our crumple in here so as we can see it. It has, of course, gone completely mental because the value is far too strong for it. We may have 300 meters, but where this is outputting black or zero, then it is, of course, scaling down to nothing, and we're getting these weird patches and stuff, so this has to go a lot smaller. So really, what we need to happen here is for there to be the clear difference in values, but not quite so much contrast. So what we'll use instead is a gradient in place of our multiply. We'll give it the range from zero to about seven meters high it goes. So where seven is being input, we'll output one, or white. We can have a quick look at that to see how it appears much as it did before, but here where zero is being input, we're going to output a much softer gray. So the amount now, if we multiply it by that, should start to look an awful lot tidier. Okay, we obviously still need some adjustment, but we're not doing as bad. There you go. As we hit 255 for this starter value, you can see that we are normal. And as I decrease it, then I get that shrinking 
taking place in some areas. And I can push this down as well to increase the scale contrast in those stretched out areas as well. So there, I think something like that makes a good balance. So I can get my sign and swell again, add it back onto the result of all of that. If we make a little preview of it like this, then we can see the effect better than VPR, because VPR is not quite quick enough for it. And we can see that we've got some really interesting movement going on. However, I do want to start moving this on X, which I said I would before, though the effect of the Y animation is looking good. I also think maybe I want to stretch it out a bit across there on Z, because of course it's all flowing this way. So maybe just tweak the scale. And of course, because it is animated the way it is, I want it to link in with the speed and scale properties that I'm setting for all of the other things. 